The words Nixon and scandal are never far apart. You just never expect them to come up in the context of watches. Until now, that is. Before we get started today, I just want to give a big shout out to my brother-in-law, who actually lent me this watch for review. Although, after what I say about it, I'm not sure he'll be lending me any more, and you can see that I'm basically risking ripping my own family apart for the sake of a video. So for that one guy who says I don't risk anything or put anything on the line for YouTube, you've got some nerve, mister. And before I forget, please do subscribe, and that's probably the first of about 58 times you're going to hear me say that throughout the video. Cheers. If you ask most people what they think of when you say the word Nixon, they'll likely think of the US president who would also like to express his fondness uh, for that uh, particular beer. But if you ask your cool cousin who likes skateboarding and stole your girlfriend despite being about 12 years old, they'll probably say it's an apparel brand that does watches, sunglasses and hats. Okay, yeah, upmarket tat. You might have even considered one of their watches at Walmart for about mm, 14 seconds before opting to get a G-Shock. So is the Bart Simpson of budget quartz fashion watches any good? Or should we send it packing to Shelbyville? Let's find out. I'm going to put my cards on the table straight away with this watch. If you didn't know already, I think this is an abomination. Aesthetics aren't an objective truth, but a subjective one. However, there are some aspects of this watch that I think we'll all agree are objectively bad. The watch in question is the Nixon A148126 Ceramic 4220. And let's not muck about here. Why don't we have a look at why this white hunk of garbage has pissed off this white hunk of garbage? I'll get the specs out of the way first because they're probably the most conventional and straightforward aspect of explaining a watch like this. It measures 42mm in diameter has a 20mm lug width, a lug to lug of 51mm, and the ceramic bracelet tapers from 20mm to... Uh, 21mm? Okay, so no taper then. Now to why this watch is the worst thing Nixon has done since Watergate. Firstly, check out this alignment. The chapter ring doesn't line up with the dial, and the bezel doesn't line up with either of them. This means you've got a loom pip at 12 o'clock on the dial. And then slightly to the right of that, you've got the chapter ring mark at, well, just past 12 o'clock. And then you've got the bezel again, slightly further along. Bezel clicks are crisp, but uneven. And I don't know how many clicks this bezel is supposed to have. It seems to have a mind of its own. It gets about halfway through turning, and then there's more resistance, less resistance, and then a bit more as it reaches, well, here. I'm going to record the audio separate from the footage of the bezel action, just so you can hear how crisp the clicks are. But I can assure you, this bezel action is all over the place. See what I mean? This thing is better heard than seen. And I think there's a reason not many brands work with ceramic, barring some of those who have a long and storied history of using it to create iconic watches, like Rado. And it's best seen on the underside of this bracelet. Okay, imagine peeling off the wallpaper after you've just walked into Don Draper's office. It wouldn't be too dissimilar looking. Look in between each of these links. You've just turned up at Sterling Cooper and Pete Doherty circa 2004 is there pitching his idea on how to absolutely ruin a watch's look by using what he's got under his fingernails. It is grim. This was serviced a couple of years ago, and it hasn't been worn as much as it might have been, and the chipped links weren't replaced, and they weren't even offered to be replaced, nor was any cleaning of the ceramic material done to stop this looking like a nicotine advert on your wrist. The clasp is an unsigned, off-the-shelf butterfly clasp that was clearly a cost-saving measure, as it takes a fair bit of patience to get it right. It doesn't just seamlessly click into place. Nope, that would be far too straightforward for a watch that costs roughly 1000 800 pounds. Okay, 1,800 pounds, seriously. Likewise, this movement is an off-the-shelf one, but from a much more prestigious shelf, which ultimately makes it even more disappointing. Okay, so we're all legends and we've all seen Shrek at least 100 times. So you'll understand when I say that this movement could be compared to Princess Fiona. She had to marry Lord Farquaad, but the audience knew that she'd essentially still be a prisoner. The ETA 2824 beaten away in this is our Princess Fiona, and the obnoxious ceramic monstrosity that is this watch is Lord Farquaad. 
It's genuinely sad to look at the exhibition case back and see a solid Swiss workhorse movement imprisoned in this horological Guantanamo Bay. Likewise, I've got a fair bit of interrogating that I'd like to do to the designers of this thing, namely on the tactile element of the watch, because the movement is obviously the best and worst thing about it. It's where a fair whack of the money's gone, based on the clearly low amount that's been put into said tactile elements. However, despite the low quality of many aspects of this watch, this thing still retailed at £1,800. I say retailed in the past tense, because thankfully it's now been discontinued. That collective sigh of relief is probably audible even over in Switzerland, which is perplexingly where Nixon managed to have this made. It's perplexing to me as there are just so many things that have been done incredibly poorly here and that I wouldn't expect of Swiss watchmakers. For one, these hideous screws shown on either side of literally every single link of the bracelet. A bracelet which doesn't have fitted end links, which I accept might be difficult to do in ceramic. My answer to that conundrum would be to not make a fucking ceramic watch. Being ceramic, it's also rather heavy, and the thickness of this thing at 14.3mm means it's pretty hefty and unwieldy. If it offered 600 meters of water resistance, maybe I could forgive it, but 200 meters? My San Martin watches that are about 13mm and 11mm respectively can do that. Coincidentally, one of those is the watch that I'll be giving away upon reaching 1000 subscribers, and boy is it mighty close. So make sure you subscribe to be in with a shout. I'll do an announcement and all the details on that sort of thing in a future post, so please stay tuned. Anyway, can we go back to that bezel for a second? Okay, so this is a 200 meter dive watch and some of you will have been looking at this going, mm, well how's that going to work? The loom pip is on the dial, not the bezel. W wait, none of the markers on the bezel insert are even visible unless they catch the light? Yeah, I can also hear you say that this isn't really a dive watch any more than a Rolex Submariner, an Omega Seamaster, or a Breitling Super Ocean are dive watches, given that about 99% of those who wear them will be wearing them in settings that categorically will not be subaquatic. But those watches at least could be used by the 1% who might want to use them for that very purpose. The only thing this bezel is good for is, well, turning it, and it isn't even good at that, as I've already pointed out. The only other loom is on the hands, meaning if there was a loom pip on the bezel, you'd still be taking a stab in the literal dark to guess how much time had elapsed since you made the kamikaze decision to plummet the depths of this monstrosity. I suppose the saving grace of this watch is that it's a limited edition, and we can all be grateful for that, as at least that means there aren't as many as there could have been out there. So why even make a video about a watch I clearly dislike? Well, because it's a classic example of a fashion brand assuming it can do something it categorically cannot. Whoever heads up Nixon evidently thinks, well, how hard can it be? Even whilst watching the most intricate and difficult of tasks being performed, like designing a dive watch. It's clearly not a simple thing to do. It takes effort and skill. Now this phrase can be pejorative in some cases, but I'll just say it. Stay in your fucking lane. For the same reason, I couldn't give a shit about what someone's cousin on Facebook thinks about the COVID-19 vaccine. I don't care for brands like Armani, Nixon, or Jesus, MVMT, giving me their shit takes on watches with their underwhelming, underdeveloped, and certainly not fit for underwater designs. These are not watch companies any more than Uncle Barry, who lives in Stoke, is a virologist. Just fucking stop. You can probably sense in my voice, it does actually annoy me. If you want to make a dive watch, then make a dive watch. But don't try and sell me this. Because those who look beyond the name can see it for what it is, and in this case, Nixon is a fashion brand, not a watchmaker. Okay, thanks for watching this rather expletive ridden and somewhat grumpy video. Uh, if it makes you feel any better, bleeping out all the swearing was more hard work than you having to listen to it, I can assure you. I thought I could use my very small plinth to have a go at a watch that I think deserves it. If you want to see that plinth get bigger, oh, as an actress said to a bishop, then please do subscribe and like the video and all that sort of stuff. I don't understand the YouTube algorithm, but apparently everyone else does, and it's a great idea. Thanks again. I'll see you next time.